Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Ruel. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. The name of this lesson is going to be entitled Ancient Assyrian Records, Captivity of Israel. Because in this lesson, I'm going to go into the ancient records of Assyria and Babylonia. And in these records, they, they speak about how the Assyrians put the northern kingdom of Israel into captivity. Okay? And this, and this goes to show you how history validates the Bible. Okay? For those out there who doubt the authenticity of the Bible. But the Bible is truth. Okay? The Bible itself is history. It's history in the Bible. Okay? You know, so I hope this lesson is edifying. And for now, Shalom. Ancient Records of Assyria and Babylonia. Part 1 by Daniel David Lukenbill. And this is the English translation because these records were originally written in Assyrian cuneiform upon stone slabs and also stone obelisks. But they were translated into English by Daniel David Lukenbill. And he had help to do it. All right, but these records help validate the Bible. Okay? I write the, the history of Assyria and also Babylonia, but primarily Assyria helps validate the Bible. All right? Which the Bible doesn't need anything to validate it. It's its own self standing book. But, you know, records like this uh, coincide with Bible history. All right, as far as telling you what happened to the, to the northern kingdom of Israel, all right, because it's written in, in the Assyrian records, just like it's written in the Bible, okay? So I'm going to read about a few of the kings of Assyria, all right, and, and, and what they did to Israel, what they did to the children of Israel. This is chapter 14 of part 1. Tiglath Pileser the third and Shalmaneser the fifth. All right, so I'm going to read about them. A. Inscriptions of Tiglath Pileser the third, one the annals, which means the yearly books, the records. Seven hundred and sixty-one. The annals of Tiglath Pileser the third. Seven hundred and forty-five to 727 BC were engraved upon the slabs of the rebuilt central palace at Kala, Nimrud. All right, so this is when he ruled. He ruled from 745 BC to 727 BC. All right. And Tiglath-Pileser III, he's also the father of Shalmaneser V, and also he's the father of Sargon II which we're going to get to him in a little while. But right now I'm going to speak about Tiglath-Pileser III and also Shalmaneser V and what they did to Israel, okay? And it says, uh, let's see, these, these slabs were later removed by S.R. Hayden to be used in the southwest palace of the same city. As a result of the removal and retrimming of the stone, the annals have come down to us in a fragmentary state without the aid of the ep 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 eponym without the aid of the eponym list with the notes it would have been impossible to arrange the fragments in their chronological order and even so future discoveries are likely to show that the arrangement now gen generally accepted is wrong so uh, these events, they're, they're not written in a chronological order, but these events still took place. These events still happened. All right. You know, because they were uh, compi compiling these different uh, records, you know, but th they were in a fragmentary uh, state. 
So they were in fragments. They were broken up. So, so they had to put them back together. All right. And now I'm going to go to page 279. All right. And I'm reading about Tiglath Pileser the third. All right. I'm going to go to the bottom. 779. On my former campaign, all of the cities I counted, his I had carried off, and Sam Samarina, Samaria, he left alone, their king. So it's speaking about uh, Samaria, which is the northern kingdom of, of uh, Israel. All right. Primarily uh, the, the tribe of Ephraim, but also all the other tribes when it speaks about Samaria. OK. You know, so th this coincides directly with the Bible. All right. What he's speaking about. OK. And even his name is in the Bible. All right. And you're going to see how it lines up. OK. And I'm going to go to page 292. All right. All right, and uh, this is number four, fragmentary annals text, um, 815, the city of Hata Rika, up to Mount Saua, the cities of Gubla, Gibel, Simira, Arca, Zimar, Z Zimara, the cities of Usna, Sa 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 Sia, Nu, Ria, Raba, Ria, Sisu, the cities of the upper sea. I brought under my sway six of my officials as governors I set over them. The city of Rashpuna, which is on the shore of the upper sea. The cities of Night Galaza Abil Aka, which are on the border of Bit Hum Humria, House of Omri, Israel. All right, so Bit Humri or, or Bit Humria is, 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 is a house of Omri or house of Israel. Okay, because a uh, bit is where you get the word bath which is a uh, house and home real is, is a uh, Omri. Okay. Which was an Israelite who, who purchased the, uh, the land of uh, Samaria. All right. And named it Samaria. All right. I'm going to read this again. It says the cities of night, Galaza, Abil Aka, which are on the border of bid home real house of Omri, Israel, the wide land of Naphtali in its entirety, I brought within the border of Assyria. My official, I set over them as governor, Pi Nunu, Hano of Gaza, fled before my weapons and escaped to Egypt. All right. So, th so that, that's the point. All right. He, he took the land of Omri. He took the land of Naphtali. All right, the, the people and brought them to uh, Assyria. OK, he brought the people of Naphtali to the land of Assyria. And I'm going to read that in the Bible. OK, I'm going to go over here. Eight hundred and sixteen. The land of Bit Humria, all of his people, it was says all of his people. So all the people of, of uh, the house of Omri or the house of Israel, all of his people. So it's talking about the northern kingdom. All of his people together with their goods, I carried off to Assyria. Pakua, their king, they deposed, and I placed Asi Hosea over them as king. So Pakua, that's talking about uh, Pekah, all right, which was, which was a uh, king of Israel. All right, so, and when you read about it, uh, Hosea had uh, Pekah killed. 
he, he killed Pika and, and he became king. But but it, it says here how he was placed as king. So you how you know, different uh, kings of other nations will place up puppet uh, kings over other nations. OK, so they did that to us. All right. So he says, I place our sea, which is Hosea, over them as king. Ten talents of gold. Ten talents of silver a as their tribute I received from them and to Assyria I carried them. All right. Now we're going to read that in the Bible. OK, this is the King James Bible. All right. I'm going to go to Second Kings chapter 15 and verse 27. All right. And it says I'm, I'm at the bottom here. In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned 20 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, and right here it says Pakua. But it's Pekah, you know. And uh, it says, and in, the, and in the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and took Ijon and Abel, Beth, Maaka, and Jano, Ah, and Kedesh, and Hazor. And Gilead and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. All right, so hey, that's it. That that matches up directly with uh, what's written uh, in here. Okay, or should I say the Assyrian records match up directly with the Bible? All right, because it's all about the Bible, and it says, and Hosea the son of Elah made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and smote him, and slew him, and reigned in his stead in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. All right? You know, so then Hosea began, began to reign in Pekah's stead. Okay? And Hosea was, was uh, reigning during the time of uh, Shalmaneser V, which was the son of Tiglath Pileser III. Okay? But this is the point. All right? <laughs> this is the point. All the land of Naphtali, he, he carried them captive to Assyria. All right? That, that's it. That's it. All right? Because it says it here the wild land of Naphtali in its entirety. I brought within the border of Assyria. Okay? So that's the point, man. All right? And this is going to end it for uh, for part one. All right, I'm going to be back with part two with Shalmaneser V. So for right now, I'm going to say Shalom. Shalom. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Welcome to part two to ancient Assyrian records, captivity of Israel. And in this segment, I'm going to be speaking about Shalmaneser V, which is one of the sons of Tiglath Pileser III. This is 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. All right. <clears throat> and I read in part one how Hosea was placed as king. All right. By, by the, uh, the, the king of Assyria. OK. And it tells you in second Kings chapter 15, verse 30. And Hosea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and smote him and slew him and reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. All right. So Hosea made conspiracy against Pekah 
and and uh, and killed him and reigned in his stead. All right, reigned in in his place. And during the reign of Tiglath Pileser the third, which is one of the kings of Assyria. All right, it tells you on page two ninety three. In the ancient records of Assyria and Babylonia, part one, 816, the land of Bit Hamria, which is the land of the house of Amri, the land of the house of Israel, all of its people together with their goods, I carried off to Assyria. This is Tiglath Pileser III speaking. Pakaha, their king, they deposed, and I placed Asi Hoshea over them as king. All right. So uh, Pakaha, which is which was uh, Pika, was uh, deposed. And, and the king of Assyria said that he placed Asi, which is Hosea, over Israel as king. All right. You know, and Hosea made conspiracy against Pika, had him put to death and reigned in the stead. All right. So this all lines up. OK. And back in Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter 17, verse Three. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and brought and, and gave him presents. All right. Now it's speaking about Shalmaneser the fifth, which is uh, uh, the king of Assyria, and and Shalmaneser the fifth is also the son of Tiglath Pileser the third. Okay, and it says how Hosea became his servant meaning Hosea became a slave and gave him presents, meaning paid him tribute. Okay. And that tribute started with Shalmaneser's father, Tiglath Pileser III. All right. Because when, when you read again, we read in here again, Pakaha, their king, they deposed and I placed our see Hosea over them as king, 10 talents of gold, 10 talents of silver, as their tribute I received from them, and to Assyria I carried them. All right, so Hosea and Israel were paying tribute to uh, Tiglath Pileser III, which is the father of Shalmaneser V. All right, so they, they were already paying tribute. All right, and, and, and the point is that uh, Israel was in subjection to, to uh, Assyria at, at this time. Okay? And uh, the Israelites were carried away captive to Assyria. So that th there were different uh, deportations by different kings. All right. Mainly Tiglath Pileser III, Shalmaneser V, and also uh, Sargon. Some, some people call him Sargon II because he's not the first one that had that name. All right. But going back to 2 Kings chapter 17. And uh, and uh, verse verse four. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to the, to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land. And went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. So we're still speaking about Shalmaneser V. And the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. All right. Now, uh, Shalmaneser V, he's not the first king. Of, of Assyria to lead Israel into captivity because his father did it. But when Shalmaneser V did it, he he, he, uh, he took a, a greater population of Israel to Assyria. All right. That was a bigger deportation. But his father, Tiglath Pileser III, he took Israel to, uh, to Assyria. All right. It says it right here in, in their records. All right. To, to Assyria, I carried them. All right. And he's speaking about the, the northern kingdom, but mainly the, the tribe of uh, Naphtali, the tribe of Naphtali. All right. 
See, the, the wide land of Naphtali in its entirety are brought within the border of Assyria. All right. But his son, Shalmaneser V, brought a greater population of Israel to Assyria. All right. So, so this all lines up, man, which proves that, that, that the Bible is true. This proves that the Bible is real history. And I'm going to read a little bit about Shalmaneser V and the ancient records of Assyria and Babylonia, part one. I'm going to go to page 297. All right. Shalmaneser V and also Shalmaneser V, he reigned from 727 B.C. to 722 B.C. All right. B. Shalmaneser V, 828. On a fragment of a small cylinder, British Museum stands the text, stands the only text we have from Shalmaneser V. The inscription is badly mutilated, but from the closing lines, it is evident that we are dealing with a memorial cylinder placed in Ezida, Nabu's temple at Borsippa. All right, so th there's only one inscription of from Shalmaneser V. All right, so it's, it's not much information on him. All right, but the Bible speaks about what he did, okay, which is what's important. But I'm going to read this uh, section, and this is uh, speaking about what he did. 829. All right, and it's badly mutilated, so you have to put the pieces of, pieces of the puzzle together. Who did not bow in submission at his feet? The, the mention of his name, his word, bringing hastily before him those not obedient to my command that he caused to be surrounded, surrounding the town, the God in whom he trusted. With his help, not draw my yoke. Who carried off and was turning them it to himself, his own use. His word and the mention of his name, they did not fear and did not dread his rule. Overflowed his land and laid it low like a deluge. His own fell upon him. And his life was no more. I carried off and brought to Assyria. Okay. So he could he could possibly be speaking about Hosea, the, the king of Israel, and, and, and also the northern kingdom. Because the, the history tells you how he carried Israel off to Assyria. All right. And, and also the Assyrians conquered other nations. But, but they really took pride in conquering Israel. Okay? They really took pride in conquering Israel. Shalom. All praise to Yahweh by Shemia Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. This is part three. The finale to ancient Assyrian records, captivity of Israel. And in this segment, I'm going to be reading about Sargon II. Sargon II, which was also one of the sons of Tiglath-Pileser III, as was Shalmaneser V, one of Tiglath-Pileser III's sons. Also, Sargon II was. All right. So I'm in the book, Ancient Records of Assyria and Babylonia, Part 2, translated by the same man, Daniel David Lukenbill. And I'm going to go to page two. All right. And I'm going to read it at the top. OK. It says the annals. Number one, the annals. Number three, on the wall slabs of three, two, five, and thirteen of the salons of his palace at Dur Sharukin, 
Korah Sabad, Sargon had engraved the authorized version of the annals of his reign. In the following translation, Winkler's numbering of the lines is followed. The introduction, a uh, second 1 to 10a, was probably an almost exact duplicate of 2, 1 to 16 of the cylinder inscription. 117. Year 1, the deportation of the Israelites, a minor raid into Babylonia. Number 2, 10b to 23. All right. Number four, at the beginning of my rule in my first year of reign, Samarini, the people of Samaria, of Shamash, who causes me to attain victory, 27,290 people who lived therein, I carried away 50 chariots for my royal equipment. I selected from among them the city I rebuilt. I made it greater than it was before. People of the lands my hand had conquered, I settled therein. My official I placed over them as governor. Tribute tax I imposed upon them as upon the Assyrians. All right, so this is letting you know what he did. Okay? Sargon II is letting you know that he led the Israelites away captive. He's letting you know what he did, man. All right. So Sargon II, he finished the military campaign against Israel. Okay. He finished what his brother started, which also their, their father really started it. Tiglath Pileser III. But Shalmaneser V, he's known for carrying away captive the 10 tribes. Shalmaneser V is uh, highly known for that. So Sargon II, he finished the the, uh, the job, okay? He finished the, the, the job. 27,290 people he carried away captive, all right? So he finished the uh, military campaign, all right, which uh, he seized the throne from his brother in a violent coup. He took the throne from his brother. That's how he began to reign, all right? But the, the point is that he, he led the Israelites away captive. And um, this is on page three, year two, against the rebels in Syria, two, 23 to 31. Number five, in my second year of reign, Ailu I Bidi of Hamath, which is Syria, of the, of the wide land of Amuru, he gathered together at the city of Karkar, the, the oath, the cities of Arpad, Samira, Damascus, and Samaria, revolted against me. I established and Saibu ordered his Tartan to go to his Hano's aid. And he came forth against me, offering battle and fight. The point is that it mentions Damascus and Samaria. And in this lesson, I'm focusing on Samaria. All right. You know, but the, the king of Assyria, Sargon II, he's speaking about fighting against uh, Syria. All right. So Damascus, Hamath. All right. But the point I'm harping upon is Samaria, which is which is dealing with the 10 tribes of Israel. OK, the, the 10 tribes, also no, known as the northern kingdom. This is on page 26, uh, 55, all right? Now, I'm going to read right here. I besieged and captured Samaria, carrying off 27,290 of the people who dwelt therein. Fifty chariots I gathered from, from among them. I caused others to take their portion. You know, so the, the deported inhabitants. All right, wait a minute. He said he said that he caused others to take their portion. All right, so he placed heathens in the land of Samaria. All right, just like Shalmaneser the fifth did. 
You know, when you read in 2 Kings chapter 17, 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, it tells, tells you how the king of Assyria brought inhabitants from Babylon and, and from those other lands and placed them in the cities of Samaria. All right. So, so that's what it's speaking about. I set my officers over them and imposed upon them the tribute of the former king. All right. So that's the point. All right. Coming over here. Which, which is basically what I read before. It's, it's talking about the same thing, but I'm going to read it again. I, U, Bidi, of Hamath, a camp follower with no claim to the throne, an evil Hittite was plotting in his heart to become king of Hamath and had caused the cities of Arpada, Samira, Damascus, and Samaria to revolt against me had unified them and prepared for battle. All right. So, you know, it's uh, saying the same thing I read before. All right. Now I'm going to go to page 40. Okay. Now I'm going to read right here. I plundered the city of Shenu to Semarina, Samaria and the whole land of Bit Humria, Israel. All right, so he, you know, uh, these different kings of Assyria, they was proud to do it. They was proud to take us down. All right? So you think we're not going to be uh, happy to take them down? All right? We're going to be excited to do it just like they did it to us. Okay? Which, which, uh, the, you know, the Assyrians, they're, they're not in power today. They, they were taken down thousands of years ago. They went down by the Babylonians. Okay. But, you know, they're still going to slavery. They're going to be in slavery in the kingdom of heaven. All right. I'm going to go to page 51. Page 51. Still reading about Sargon II. Okay. And uh, th this is Sargon II speaking about himself. All right. I'm going to uh, start at the top. 99. Number four. Palace of Sargon, the great king, the mighty king, king of the universe, king of Assyria, viceroy of Babylon, king of Sumer and Akkad, favorite of the great gods, restorer of of the prosperity of Sapar, Nupur, and Babylon. And as you can see, they give overinflated titles of themselves, you know, because these kings saw themselves as bigger than what they were, all right? They were, they were proud, you know? They felt like they were gods on earth, you know? But, um, you know, a, uh, the, the Lord gave them that type of power, on the planet Earth, you know, to, to rule the Earth at that time. Okay, so it was a big deal to them. Seeing how their enemies were falling into their hands. Okay. You know, so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. The point I'm getting up on is what they were talking about dealing with us. Because they were proud to take us down. Okay. Right here. Conqueror of Samaria and the whole land of Bit. Homria, which is the land of Omri, also known as the, the land of Israel, the house of Omri or the house of Israel, who carried off the spoil of Ashdod and Shenu too. And that's in the scriptures. All right. So he said that he's the conqueror of Samaria and the whole land of Bit Humria or, or, or Humria, who carried off the spoil of Ashdod and Shenu too. All right, I'm going to read that. All right. I'm going to read that in the scriptures. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 20, verse 1. And the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it. Hey, so that's it. Showing you that history lines up with the Bible. 
because the Bible is history. OK. You know, he fought against Ash, died and, and took it. The king of Assyria did Sargon the second. OK. You know, and uh, he sent this man right here, Tartan, which which uh, it tells you that means uh, his commander in chief. All right. You know, but uh, that's the point. OK. And some scholars speculate that he took Ash, died in 711 uh, B.C. So this was some time after he uh, seized uh, Samaria or took down Samaria, okay? B bringing those 27,290 captives to uh, Babylon and, and Assyria, okay? All right, but, uh, you know, that's the point. You know, so I hope this was edifying. The Bible is history. And I'm going to be back with some other parts to this because... When you read in the scriptures, first and foremost, when you read in the Bible and uh, and also in these different records of these uh, different uh, nations, you know, it's, it's so much to get into. You know, it, it also mentions in these records of the kings of uh, Israel, uh, Azariah, uh, Jehu, you know, uh, uh, Jehoaz, all right, King Ahab. It, men it mentions those different kings of Israel in, in these Assyrian records, okay? So I'm, I'm going to be back with that later. But um, I hope this was uh, edifying to, to the brothers, you know, to the sincere learners out there, to, to the sincere followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So to the next lesson I say, Shalom. We're going to start our search for the lost tribes where they were last reported to be located. That is in ancient Assyria and Media. Now, this is in northern modern Iraq and Iran. Our first clue to the ultimate fate of the lost tribes was found by the archaeologists in excavating the Assyrian Royal Library at Nineveh. That is in the ruins of the palace of uh, Sargon II. They were in the form of cuneiform tablets, such as you see here. These were actually uncovered over a century ago, translated in 1930 by Professor Waterman of the University of Michigan. But their relevance to Israel was completely overlooked. This was because they were in complete disorder among some other 1,400 other texts, and no Israel words or names appeared. One tablet, dated 707 B.C., referred to a land called Gumir, which was occupied by people called Gumira or Gimera. Now, this was a very area the Israelites had been placed just 14 years previously. Gamir, we believe, is evidently a corruption of Gomri, the Assyrian name for Israel, formed by the inversion of the final syllable, I-R, to R, I should say R-I, to I-R. Such inversions are very common in Assyrian writings. These tablets were actually spy reports sent to the Assyrian king from a frontier post, the king being that time was Sargon. These reports covered a large period of time. That's fascinating. Now, these reports, what did they say? Well, among other things, they reported that the exiled Israelites were not slaves. They were actually freemen. Had their own homes, their cities, towns, uh, engaged in various activities. They had agriculture, manufacture. Would you believe they even had their own standing army? Now, this is, sounds strange, but consider the fact why were the Israelites in Assyria? Now, Assyria in the past, any time they occupied, I should say, subjected an area, they merely sent their overseers there to extract a tribute and so on. But with the Israelites, this is an ex exception. They brought these men up to Assyria to act as buffers around the borders of the country. In other words, these, evidently they were fierce fighters in those days. Well, what do you mean, buffers? Well, for instance, any outside invasion coming directed toward Assyria, they'd have to penetrate first through the Israelite lines. That means the Israelites would have to fight for their lives, either repulse the enemy or at least, uh, you might say, weaken them before they got to Assyria proper. Now, we can prove this because uh, one series of tablets uh, reported the invasion of Uratu, the king of Uratu, came against Assyria, and they had to penetrate first through the Israelites. Now, one of the tablets makes it very clear the Israelites put up resistance, they fought, actually repulsed the armies, and then turned around and invaded Uratu in, in exchange. In fact, they not only uh, captured or killed, see, all their army commanders, even sacked the country. Now, archaeologists had known for years the at capital of Uratu had been sacked and destroyed. They never knew who did it. 
Now the tablets for the first time reveal these were Israelites that did it. It's fascinating. You know, it makes sense, too, that uh, they would set them there because, in other words, if there's an invading army, they're going to have to come through their land, so they've got to defend their own land that they're working, their families, and that type of thing. That's interesting. Another and later Assyrian report states, in the second year of Ursa Hayden the king, now this is about 679 B.C., the Gimera, as the Israelites were then called, rose in rebellion under their leader, Tuespa. We don't know if Tuespa was a woman or a man at this stage. They fled westward. Now, the Greeks reported these same activities. They called the Gimera, Kimeroi, in their records. Now, that name is translated into English as Kimerians. Now, the branch of Israelites, now known as Kimerians, moved out of Major Minor, around and sometimes across the Black Sea, settling in the Crimea and the Carpathian regions west of the Black Sea. We find this called in Second Ezra, our Sereth, or Mountains of Sereth. Now, later when Babylon conquered the Assyrian Empire, this is about see, 612 B.C., they then invaded that part of Media where the Israelites, or Gimera, had, that had not escaped, were still there, and settled. And that, of course, drove the Gimera out of their area, some of them moving up through the uh, Caucasus, uh, through the, what we call today the Pass of Israel. I should say that some historians refer to that as the Pass of Israel. Others moved around the uh, east of the Caspian Sea and became known as Iskuzi, a name very easily derived from Isaac. Then these tablets that allow us to learn these things really provide a very valuable archaeological clue, don't they? Yes, they do. There's another major clue to tracing the lost is tribes of Israel. It's found on the side of a hill in northern Persia. It's in inscribed writings about 300 feet above the base of the mountain, the hill. Now, the inscriptions were actually carved in Akkadian, Elamite, and Old Persian languages. All three told the same story. The inscriptions show that the Babylonian name Gimera was written Saka on the Persian inscription, proving that the Gimera and the Saka were the same people. Now, the Greeks called these Scythians, I should say they called the Saka, Scythians in all their records. This is the first mention of the word Scythian. It's also interesting to note that the various names Gimera are called all have the same root, S-K, as Isaac. Now, before the tribes went into exile, they called themselves the House of Isaac. You can find this in the Bible in Amos 4, verses 7 and 16, I believe. Archaeology has not only identified these Scythians as members of the lost tribes of Israel, but for the first time provided us with realistic, lifelike pictures of what the ancient Hebrews people look like.